I am proud of my country's heritage. We're living on freedom soil. Brave men have gone before me here, unafraid to pray and toil. So this is part nine. We're looking at where we came from, where we're at, and where we're going. We've been going step by step looking at government of the people. Where is it documented in our documents? Now, we want to see where we came from, where we're at, and where we're going. To the last, it's not a sure future, but if we've lost and continue to lose, okay, the government of the people, which began with the introduction of our first 10 amendments, then it's reasonable to suggest we will go back to where we were before our constitution. What was it that those who insisted upon adding the first 10 amendments were committed to keep out of our government, to keep from our government? throughout time and place, to one degree or another. Governments have begun as an agreement of humans. And then they've morphed into a form in which one group of people believe they have the right and the duty to rule another group of people. One of the goals and temporary accomplishments of the government of the people was to prevent this. Again, except for God's revelation, we cannot know the future but we can to some degree see the past and that and what it's been written by men. This may help us see where we're going and where we're at. We see where we came from fairly clearly in a document called the Declaratory Act of 1766. This was an act of parliament. According to Dr. Google, an act of parliament was a form of primary legislation, a text of law passed by the legislative bodies of the British government, the parliament, and approved by the king. This act received royal assent March 18th of 1766, and it says in part, whereas several of the houses of representatives in this His Majesty's colonies and plantations in America have of late against law claimed to themselves or to their general assemblies of the same, the sole and exclusive right of imposing duties and taxes upon his majesty's subjects. The Virginia House of Burgess in uh, 65 passed a, the Virginia Resolves asserting the colonist right as Englishmen and denying parliament's authority to tax them. That was on the 31st of May, 1765. When you follow the money, follow the money and power, power and money, you'll often find the human source of the problems. They go on with this, in the said colonies and plantations and have in pursuance of such claims passed certain votes, resolutions and orders derogatory to the legislative authority of parliament. Parliament has the sole right to make laws, and it goes on inconsistent with the dependency of the said colonies and plantations upon the crown of Great Britain. Dependency. The people must have government take care of them. They, nor even they and God, cannot take care of themselves. There's a push you can recognize in the acts of our government and others today to make people not the ones in charge, but the subjects of government and dependent, or at least depend on something other than our believing God going on. May it therefore please your most excellent majesty that it may be declared and be declared by the king's most excellent majesty by and with the advice and consent of the Lord spiritual and temporal, that's the church and the state together, ruling the people and the commons. The commons were Burgess's people in charge of communities, people in charge of smaller areas. Um, they, had the, they were supposed to represent the people, but they still had their authority from the king. It was still that their authority came from the king. In this present parliament assembled, and by the authority of the same, 
that the said counties and plantations in America have been, are, and have rights ought to be subordinate. Subordinate means belonging to a lower or inferior class or rank. You know, it's secondary. You're, you're placed in a lower order. Uh, from the old language Latin, it's under, an ordinate. Um, I was in the library, and the book was, I can't remember the name of the book, but it was near the book 17, or 1491. The book 1491 was like 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? It's before the Europeans get to Central and South America. That being said, this book was near that, and on the book cover it had this, it was about a baron. And the baron came to the United States and he went through Ellis Island. And they're checking him in, and they got three guys going through his luggage. And the one guy who's in charge is chatting him up like he's his old buddy. And the other two guys going through his luggage, they find his boxing gloves and they pull them out and they put one of them on each of their, puts one on their hands and they start boxing each other. And the guy says he's thrilled. He's literally thrilled because in where he comes from, which I guess is what is Germany now, someplace, some part of that, they would have been scared of him. The, the stratification, the upper, lower, middle, that you're down here, subordinate, see? Subordinate. They'd have been scared to death of him, but they weren't. He saw the freedom. He saw the effects of the liberty that we had in this country. You know, it's this dependent. You're dependent, one who's dependent on or looks to another for support or favor. It means to hang down, dependent. You're hanging. You're, if they let go of you, you're going to drop and die. You're hanging. If you let go, you're going to drop. You're hanging, see? Dependent upon the imperial crown and parliament of Great Britain. And that the king's majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Lord, spiritual and temporal and commons, church and state of Great Britain, in Parliament so that had, hath, and of, I, of rights, ought to have full power and authority, absolute power and authority, to make laws and statutes of sufficient force and validity to bind. That's to make captives, to enslave, to bind the colonies and people of America subject, subject to the crown of Great Britain. And here's the kicker, in all cases whatsoever, a person under control or domination of another. You know, you get people trying to be the bigwigs, trying to be this upper class, the one in charge you have to obey. Uh, stories in, in New York airport, I always enjoyed the ladies there. There's been weather, there's been all kinds of cancellations and they're trying to get people flights. They're trying to work with people and get them on flights, get them the heck out of there. It's that chaos. If you've been there, you, you know what it is. You're not sure what you're doing, and they're trying to help, do the best they can. This guy comes around the line, comes all the way up the front, and starts insisting, you got to take care of me. You got to take care of me first. You got to get this done. And the lady tells him, look, sir, you're just going to have to go back in line and wait your turn like everybody else. Very nice to the guy. And the guy says, do you know who I am? <laughs> and she picks up the microphone and she goes, attention, attention, everyone. I have a man here at the counter who doesn't know who he is. If anyone does, can you please come up and help us? Whole place just broke out laughing like crazy. And this guy just, he gets it. Fury at it, he says, F you lady, you know? She said, sir, I'm afraid you're gonna have to go back in line to do that also. Wait your turn. People will try this. They'll they still, you know, in the school PTA, okay, in whoever's administering your neighborhood, you know, wherever it is, people try to be the bosses. They try, they're trying to keep this out of government. These problems they're trying to keep out of government. Okay, this is where we came from. Subordinate, dependent you know, to bind subject in all cases whatsoever. The pilgrims, okay, the pilgrims, they were separatists. They wanted to worship God according to their conscience. And they weren't being able to do that. They were being put
put in prison. They were being fined. They, were being, they weren't allowed to get involved in the government vote. They weren't allowed to get a good job. They were being punished, you know. They wanted to worship God. They went to Holland. They came back to England. And then they went to the United States of America. You see this to get away from this stuff. This is what we'll go on with this. We'll go on with this. We'll see more. We're looking at where we came from. We look at where we're going to look at where we're at and then where we're going. We'll go on. Yes, our God still bears his mighty arm when men do him are loyal. Yes, our God still bears his mighty arm when men do him are loyal.